Hello again. If you were here at the beginning of the panel, you heard me say a few words about my colleague, Dr. Rodmila Popovich, whom we lost at World Learning in January. She was, oops, this is me. <laughs> Um, she was originally supposed to be on this panel. So, at some point I was asked if I could take her place, and I thought three things. One, no one can take Rodmela's place. Two, I love AI, and in fact I used it in multiple ways to prepare for this presentation. And three, what would Rodmela do? So, I got in my Rodmela space. And the genius of Rod Miller was that she could say just the right thing at just the right time. She wasn't a verbose person. She was always so targeted, like a super teacher who would give exactly the right scaffolding at any moment. And it would often seem like a subtle, small thing, but it would be a small change in direction that over time would change the whole trajectory of your life. And Rodmela always, like I said, she always kept a focus on what was really important. So we can kind of contrast these two things, right? Cindy just described to us that AI can do so many things, produce so many words, but it doesn't have the empathy, it doesn't have the critical thinking, it's not authentic, and so we can contrast that to my dear, dear colleague who was all of those things. So I was having all of these deep thoughts, right? And I was thinking, you know, what is it that is good in life and how can we use AI to uplift the things that are important to us and to avoid the threats that we see in AI you know, losing our jobs, students not developing critical thinking, not developing empathy, and so forth. How can we do that? So I turn to UNESCO. I find that they are um, a very good source. They have this guidance for generative AI in education and research. And I was inspired by their constant focus throughout the long document on human dignity, on cultural diversity, and this idea of knowledge commons. And I was also inspired by how the document really leans into how it is the educators, the human beings, who are the ones who are able to help students develop critical thinking, <clears throat> be well in the world, right? So it is us, the educators, who need to uh, guide this ship you know, and we need to guide the ship because we're experiencing two radical existential threats right now as human species. On the one hand, the environment, and on the other hand, there is a very serious mental health crisis going on in the world that has brought unprecedented levels of anxiety and really damaged a lot of students' attentional control. These are threats that we're facing. So, what can we do about this? I posit to you that one of the most important things is physical presence. When, for example, we want to be mindful, we pay attention to our breath. When someone is at risk of a panic attack, they need to come back into their body. Like I said, I love AI, I love virtual reality, I love technology. But there is something disembodying about technology. And we need to find ways to keep human beings in their human bodies and keep critical thinking. I work at a nonprofit that works internationally, and the general mm, fight for good education is along this continuum. It's been that way forever, and it's becoming radically more so. Because AI can produce that product. We don't need memorization, so we need to focus on the process much more, and we need to focus on soft skills. So to close, I go back to the UNESCO document that really uh, shouts out to the reader how we are at a critical moment in the history of education. We're going to be needing to do some radical redefinition of what it is that people need to learn. And so, you are the ones to do that, and I look forward to discussing this even more after all.